WVTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. are tuned to WVTCRadioDetroit.com to the Sandy Rose Show with your host Sandy Rose where you'll hear the finest in gospel music, insightful conversation, and guests that will enhance you. The Sandy Rose Show can be heard every Monday and Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, live on YouTube. So get your pencil, paper, and shouting shoes and get ready for today's broadcast. Why not text a friend or tag a friend and tell them to listen to? My God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds that thy hands have made, You stood somewhere behind the great, grand, and glorious hills of eternity. Rearrange your agenda for the creation of this vast universe. You reached down with your omnipotent hand unto the great abyss of nothingness and threw nothing out into nowhere and nothing became something. What a world! we live in. Look at this world. It's gigantic and it's grand. Mountain heights with scintillating views. Valleys scooped out by eternal hands. Rolling prairies, running brooks. Rippling streams blessed with gold, silver, diamonds, and all kinds of precious minerals. My soul sing When I look and see how God splashed the multitude of stars Kissing the heavens like diamonds sprinkled against black velvet And hanging like trapezes from the roof of God's gymnasium You place the moon and announce for the world to hear This is the queen of the night And she has never stopped shining the oceans, whose depths have to be measured in miles. The sun has never run out of gas. The stars keep coming out to play. The seasons still march in splendid succession. My God is real. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He even looked around one day to see what he had created and said, that's good. And one day, when he brings everything to consummation and a glorious fruition, when he comes with a shout of acclamation to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart when he calls me, I will answer. 
and I will bow in humble adoration and my soul will say, how great, how great thou art. For I know I have a house of many mansions, eternal in the heavens, up where Jesus lives, up beyond the atmosphere, the stratosphere, the exosphere, the troposphere, up where I'll never grow old, up to the streets of gold, up beyond the vicissitudes of life. And I will honor him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and simply say to him, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and forever and forever. My God, how great thou art.
now. Amen. Yes, I know he's all right. Woo. Listen. <laughs> Woo. Yes, sir. I know he's all right. Oh, that's all right with me. That's all right with me. <sighs> okay. Oh. Okay, that's why I said we're yeah. gonna get them started today, honey. We're gonna get them started because I was up go to church, head. go to church, go to church, <laughs> straight to church, straight to church. I mean, right. from the time I saw Dr. Henry Jackson in them sequence, <laughs> I said, We about to have church. We about to have church. Quincy did a little bounce uh, <laughs> like this. Yes, he yep, had one leg. <laughs> I said, I know he's all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we want to welcome everybody, everybody to today's installment of the Sandy Rose Show. And I am Sandy Rose. And you are? I'm Pastor Jackie and just delighted to be here on tonight. On tonight. <laughs> okay. Madam On Marie. tonight. <laughs> and I am Teresa Acton, and I am glad to be here on tonight. On tonight. <laughs> on tonight. And you know I'm glad to be here. I am Ooh. Richard Daryl Nichols, all the way from Chino. Where? You know, Chino, California. All right. Chili on Chino. tonight. On tonight, you from Chino. Okay. I'm from Chino. <laughs> Oh, as All uh right. Mama Florence called the Chino Tambourine, honey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mama Florence. Yes. yes, I cannot wait for the women to get back singing again because we we are going to learn that song. Okay. okay. Oh, good. <laughs> that's a good. We one. are going to learn that song. I love it. That's, love it. That's, love. that's a that's that's a good one. That's that's a good. One. Yeah, it's a good song. I'm it's good. a good song. Good Listen, if you breathe in your living testimony. Right. If you a woke up, testimony. if oh. you woke up this morning, you are living testimony. testimony. Come on, somebody. Come on. Woo. And I, I, you know, the old folks used to say that I rise today as a living testimony. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You can't be nothing else. But I get it. I get it now. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Amen. I get it. I'm with I you now. It. Yeah, that, that see, you can be a testimony, but see, when you live in inside, mm -hmm. see, I'm not gonna go all the way there because see, I I put the song back on and we do a reprise. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but you know, I'm a little concerned, Sister Sandy. You know, when oh, I looked uh, at I looked at that CD, and as it went through the choir, just about everybody had gray hair. Yeah, <laughs> just, hey. just about. Yeah. Then when they went through the audience, just about everybody there. Had grass I said, where the cheering? Lord, where's the cheering? Yeah. Where's the cheering? But that's all right. Yeah. They still so it's it's got to be something, a little something for everybody. So, yes. Um, yes. you know, I yes. it's some stuff that I don't think I could take for two hours. Um, you know, a whole oh, class of school, things but, I can't take for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> but see, now that right there, I could sit, I could sit two, three, four. To me, that's what heaven would be like. You know, like one choir after the other, uh -huh. you know, and we just had a nightly musical just enjoying all the music. Uh huh. Just one choir. It, it's right, it's right, an right. encore. Heaven will be an encore of praise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, That's I, what it and, is. And to me, that, and that kind of thing just boosts my spirit right there. It, it encourages me and lets me want to go on and see what the end's going to be. <laughs> Um, we're gonna do a little weather. And get this out. Uh, we got 84 in the Sunshine State, all right down there with Nikki and Minnie and all the rest of the cheerings. And it's 84 whole degrees down there, and the sun shining on both sides of the street. All right, uh, we got 48 in Chicago. That's a little more than what we got, Pastor Jackie. Thanks, you know. All right. Yeah, yeah, we we forty five, so that's good. Yeah, because but she forty five. I'm telling you, it's got me nervous though. We gonna have winter till June. <laughs> if, if it don't yeah, get cold, it's, well, cold. it's coming in like a, a like a line, and they said Friday it's gonna be it's gonna roar. Wow! Yes, they got your ice. That it's supposed to be cold Friday. Well, yeah, the it's ice is pretty much gone. Um, you yeah. know, I, the, the ice is gone. 
Um, mm. But, you know, it's, things have been happening one day and then the next day it's like it never happened. Right. Mm. Wow. Right. This is how our yeah. winter has been. We we haven't had like um, long snow and you know that kind of thing. It right. happened today. That ice storm, then it went away. Yeah, got it. Give it two days, and you know uh, you didn't forgot about it. Rock that ice storm was long enough to knock lights out. All and some people. of them are still out. And, and some man, are was still the DPE out. people, honey. Yeah. I don't want to work. Some are still out today. Yeah, it didn't knock my lights out, but that ice it broke a limb off a tree in my backyard and I had a frame for my uh, covering, you know, you have a little shed, you know, where you could put your picnic under and got the little tent where the limb fell on my frame. So my frame now is, <laughs> so I, I gotta, I gotta get, my husband wanted me to get a new one anyway. I gotta get a new one. Okay. So well, I, so you've been praying and the Lord answered that prayer. It wasn't like, <laughs> I think you're right, Sandy. Even, honey, why don't you get, into, honey, let's get, why don't you get, yeah, you see, know, God answers prayer. Y'all just be mad because it, it don't happen like <laughs> you want it to happen. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's a pretzel. <laughs> the yeah. whole thing, it's a pretzel. I said, okay, well, that's gone. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we had such a strong storm that it pulled up one of our trees. See, Just see. Uprooted it. Wow. I yeah. mean, it was that strong. So uh, the, the tree was dead anyway, but it was still standing. Yeah. But that that but wind it, just. That's like some of the saints. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shame Man, on you, you said I'm gonna leave the jokes for the comedian, okay? I'm gonna leave the jokes for the comedian. She said that's all the jokes today. I'm not gonna laugh at that. I'm not, I'm not gonna that. laugh at that either. Mm -mm. You did already, Sister Pastor Jack. It's too late. Yeah, it's too late. But it's sunny and 65 in Phoenix, there in the desert. In the desert. And we mm -hmm. got cool. the Bay Area, 51, cold, windy, and rainy. Oh, Lord. Ooh. See, I don't know. I think I would just, because every time she come on, it's cold, cold. windy, and rainy. <laughs> it's rainy in <laughs> Northern <laughs> California. You know what? We sending sunshine into your life. All right. right. Yes. Let the sun shine in. Let the sun shine <laughs> in. The sun shine in. Um, Hallie is right here in the Detroit area, and she's got 46 degrees. Did it get that? That's good. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's what I'm saying. Is this, this year we have, have winter all for the <laughs> till June <laughs> with this crazy winter. Oh. It needs to get cold. It needs to, you know, I'm used to having snow that's at least two feet high stacked on the side in the yard, and it sits in the yard for weeks mm -hmm. and weeks and weeks, and you know. Oh, it's winter. Yeah, <laughs> winter. It's, winter. it's not winter. And on the side of the road, just embankments of piles of snow. We have none. <laughs> we have none. So Teresa's got 60 there in Lexington. And I understand that the Asbury oh, Park the, uh, College, the people have dispersed. Oh, yeah. 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 So they said they they said it was a, a Holy Ghost time there. Yeah. I I'm watching the videos, you know. <laughs> but the uh, the residents were kind of upset, and some of the <laughs> business owners because it's like they disrupted, you know, their business and their their homes, and so they were kind of glad, you know, that they they left for that purpose. I'm sure they weren't, you know, irreligious or anything like that, but it did it was a disruption a disruption. Yeah. Yeah. And they said that there was um, a couple cases of measles. There? Yes. And what what had Maybe. happened was the people have not been getting their kids and stuff vaccinated since the panorama. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, they, they were talking about the millions of kids who have not had a vaccination since in the past oh. three years. So you know, it could really be an outbreak of something because these kids are not immunized. Immunized. Mm. immunized. immunized. Yeah. yeah. Immunized. In his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say the jokes for the comedian. <laughs> You're on a roll. That was funny, though. I'm going to say the comedian. 
Um, we got 55. It's, it's so time. cold here. I couldn't spell so. I just had to put the S there. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It, that's cold. Okay. That's cold. <laughs> and um, we've got 74. Uh, but now this is the Duchess, Duchess of Sussex. And uh, but it's 74 on the inside, okay. Like the inside the house, that's what I'm gonna yeah. say. Yeah, so yeah, it's inside the house, all right. So, um, we are we are just so happy, and we're happy that um, Mama Florence's power she had lost power for six days, she still Man. doesn't have the telephone service. So, we are yet praying that the the AT&T people will come out and do what they need to do. But uh, we fixed the devil because the devil thought that he was she wasn't going to be able to see that broadcast. But we fixed them, didn't we? Amen. So, Amen. I mean, she is on the air with us today. And uh, we are just we are just happy to be here. We are happy to be here. Uh, it looks like everybody is in full number and um, and we're we're doing good. Can I say something real quick? You can. Something nice happened today uh, for my parents. We like nice things. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a new version of a, a school that was originally a segregated black school. Uh, it was called uh, Douglas. Mm -hmm. And after, of course, after Frederick Douglass. Well, the new school is uh, Frederick Douglass High School. And they wanted to get some of the original alumni together to talk about their experiences with segregation. And so my mom and father, yes, my mom, mother and father uh, were on the panel. Uh, my really? father my father graduated from the old Douglas and my mother taught there when she first started oh, teaching. Oh, wow. So they kind of wanted to get their perspective on life and things like that. So it was a very good thing. Um, uh, they asked the questions, but the questions that were answered, people basically told about their life story as opposed to actually answering the question. But it was OK, because I think the kids needed to hear, um, you know, a living what, what testimony. Was, exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. So uh, it was it was nice. It was uh, televised, um, uh, at least it's on, on the news or whatnot. So um, I'm very proud of them. My, my dad is 90 years old. And my mother is 86. And anytime we could get their story at this time of life, um, it's yes. a good thing. So I was very glad to be there. Amen. Amen. Good for them. Good for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so nice. On this, this last day of the Black Black History yep. Month. Yeah, well, it's the last man. day, but again, we black all the time. So we we, we, we will keep it, giving <laughs> our black no, history. Black. Um, we will keep giving our black history uh throughout the year. Yeah, we, we'll do that. We we have Amen. not stopped black, and we don't talk about black people enough for me. All right. Enough. Well, we do have a guest. And we've today. done some awesome things. We have. Yeah. We have, and we we've done great things. We've got a whole lot of awesome And it's more Great than basketball thing. and football. That's right. Yeah, more than a mic and a, and a ball. You're mm -hmm. right. You are right. You are Thank right. you. More than a basketball. All right. No offense to any of that. <laughs> okay, we do have a guest today. And I think she's uh she's gonna try to make us laugh, but I'm <laughs> I'm waging, I'm betting. I'm not gonna make let her make me laugh. I'm gonna be here and not laugh oh, one laugh. bit. So she can say hi, and I'm gonna go in. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have Sister uh, Canelo. Her name is Trina Jeffries. She is known as a celebrity clean comedian throughout the world. For the past thirty years, Trina, along with her true fictional character, aka Sister Canelo. Cantaloupe is known as the queen of gospel comedy in Christian community. Trina is a native of Dallas, Texas, but she resides between her two homes 
in Dallas, Texas, and Los Angeles, California. Right. Trina is not just limited to the Christian community, but she also has over 30 years of experience of performing comedy in corporate events, casinos, cruise lines, award shows, conventions, trade shows, holiday parties, celebrity birthday parties, your party, my party, her party, <laughs> and his party, also in city community functions, theatrical plays, movies, appearance, and much more. Trina, aka Sister Cantaloupe, supportive fans stretch across the United States of America in international areas such as Germany, London, Japan, Bahamas, Jamaica, and more. She is the pioneer of Christian and gospel comedy, but prefers to be known as the clean, most inspirational comedian. Trina Jeffrey started from her form of comedy back in 1986, and it has mm -hmm. definitely been rewarding for her over the years. Trina currently serves as co-host on a syndicated radio station in Dallas with Willa Mae McIver on Beyond the Praises, which has over 6 million listeners. Six millions, that's a big number. That's a big in number. In November 2000, <laughs> yes. <laughs> in 2016, Trina received the distinguished Lifetime Achievement Award from the President Barack Obama. This okay. very humble woman has won over 50 highly sought after awards in her 30 year career. Trina Jeffrey also has a comedy award named after her called the Sister Cantaloupe Award. It is given out every year to up and coming clean Christian or gospel comedians who is making headway in their com comedy uh, profession. Uh, Trina is quick to say, God is the only daddy I've ever known and he spoils me so, to God be the glory. So let's put our hands together, stand on your feet if you want to, and give a good God <laughs> bless you and a WVTC welcome to Sister Trina Jeffrey, A.K. Booty <laughs> woo. All right, all right. She will be on. We're going to go and play this song. And this is none other than our good friend, Lemmy Battle. She's all the way from Chicago, um, and she. this is her new song. So when we come back, we'll be right here with Sister Cantaloupe. You're watching the Sandy Rose Show right here on WBTC, the gospel radio show station right here in Detroit. We'll be right back.
yes, sir, yes, sir. That was none other than our good friend, Sister Lemmy, Lemmy Battles right there in Chicago. Y'all better pick that up because you can listen to that all over and over and over yes. and over again because yes. you better never, ever stop praising God. Well, we are here today with our guest for today none other than sin most of y'all looked at her and said who that is how, how, <laughs> I know who that woman is because y'all used be to that woman? Seeing <laughs> her all decked up with her you know with all of her garb her <laughs> yep. but we have none other than sister cantaloupe and uh well trina jeffries aka sister cantaloupe how you doing today girl I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Miss Sandy? <laughs> As Richard would say, all is well and getting better. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm fair to partly cloudy with a chance of rain. Yeah, I heard <laughs> you tell Mr. Steve Harvey at the top that he talking about he ain't going to laugh. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I see your teeth. I see your teeth. <laughs> he trying to hold it in. <laughs> he trying to hold it in. He be reserved. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm gonna give he you a smile at the beginning. Get on the elevator. I'm, he trying he to hold me. it in. He wants me. That's I'm what it is. I'm giving you a smile at the beginning. <laughs> you you want me, don't you? <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm just messing with him. I'm just messing with him. You know, as they say, like when you get on the elevator, try to hold it in. Hold it right. in. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So how are you? How are you doing? I am doing well, doing well. I am in California. Uh, actually, I'm in Palmdale, California. And I heard y'all talking about the storm and the craziness that's going on here. Yeah. I thought I left. I, I, you know, I live in Texas, but I stay in California. I thought I left all of that and it followed me up here. I was like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. Sure did. Crazy. They've been having cyclone winds, yeah. which is like, to me, a hurricane and a tornado had a baby. <laughs> and this is what happened. Because <laughs> this is scary. Right. Right. <laughs> and they say, you know, hey, you you used to this, aren't you? I said, no, nah, because when we hear winds like that, we run and hide. But uh, they they seem cool about it. So I tell you, I'm going to be cool too. Yeah. Are, you, are your relatives in, the rest of your relatives in Texas still? Because they had bad weather as well. Yes, yes, yes. My uh, my sisters and brothers and my uh, my mom, they are all in, in uh, Dallas, Texas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you go yeah, make a snowman? Say something that we used to laugh about as kids um, when they would always ask us, now, uh, where you live? And the kid would say, I stay on. Um, and it's like, no, where you live, honey? <laughs> so you live in Dallas, <laughs> but stay you stay with my mommy. <laughs> I stay with my mama. <laughs> right, that's what they say. In my room. They say. I live with my mama. Mm -hmm. They don't never say daddy. You notice that. That's why I've been for a long time. I stay over here. Right, so now, right, um, right. how did you get into comedy? How did you know you were funny? Uh, my mama told me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's not right. That's Girl, right, you know though. You <laughs> I started uh, uh, in the third grade. I won my first oratorical contest. And okay. then from there, I kind of got bit by the, the acting bug. And so I started doing a lot of writing my own scripts and skits and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And as I became older, I would want the, the longest poem. And I want because also I'm, I'm dyslexic and I'm ambidextrous at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I don't learn uh, the regular way other people learn. I mm -hmm. learn by seeing and by remembering everything. So I don't spell words. I remember words. Hmm. And so, that, which gave me a, a, a wealth of knowledge to remember big bodies of, of, of everything, of, mm -hmm. of books. I can remember I, if the movie start, I know that movie by just the first frame because I remember, right. oh, this is so-and-so. Oh, this is so-and-so. How y'all you, know how you know that? It's because I just have it in my brain. So I started doing a lot of uh, skits and stuff like that. And in my skit, I didn't know I was funny. I was just saying stuff and people started laughing and say, oh you could be a comedian i was like oh yeah okay but i want to be an actress couldn't sing can't sing a lick don't sing myself out of a paper bag and uh <laughs> so i would go try out for a lot of plays and david talbert and all the other uh directors and stuff they say we can teach you how to act but we can't teach you how to sing so you in my plays you have to sing and i was like ah so i started writing my own scripts and putting fingers in my background and they would do my singing while i act Mm. And that's kind of how I got started. And then uh, when I was in my 20s, my pastor said, I want you to do something you've never done before. 
I want. I don't even want to know about. I don't want to see all that stuff I've already seen. Write something different. I want right. you to do it at the Founders Day de- uh, dinner. So I wrote this character, and she was a busybody, nosy, in trouble, always in everybody's business character. And I came to the uh, the banquet, and I was the last one on. So everybody had already eaten. And I was like, what can her name be? I called the sister television, sister talk too much. I had like a long list. And I said, well, when I get up there, it'll hit me. So what I, I so I used to do where it, the comedy was outside, meaning that I would pretend other people were there that was not there. And so I, so I was at the hospital and I said, my name? And then I looked around and I saw that everybody had eaten everything on the buffet except for the cantaloupes. And I said, cantaloupe. Just the cantaloupe from the church. And everybody just fell out laughing. Like, ah! And so Is that's it? how Sister Cantaloupe came, came, alive, came alive. Yeah. And then uh, 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 they, they, back in the day, they called him DJ. I don't know what they call him today, but back then, then it was DJ. Or announcers. Announcers. Yes, y'all have evolved. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Beg my pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But his name was Ciotis State Jackson. And he was one of the... Uh, uh, he had won like all the Stella Award for being an announcer. He was just like the man. And he, he was at the banquet. He said, I want you to come to my next musical. Now, I don't know about in your city, but in my city in Dallas, if you were invited to a musical back then, this is when uh, uh, Douglas Miller and all of those folks was out. Uh-huh. If you were invited to a musical, you were like, you know, almost made it, you know, yeah, in wow. Texas. And so he said, come. He said, and he said, next we'll have, he said, told me to get ready. He said, next we'll have our very own first Christian comedian. I sit down because I didn't know who he was talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Trina Jeffrey. I said, what? <laughs> so I came out. I did my skit. Uh, everybody loved it, of course. Uh, not bad bragging on myself. I'm just saying that they loved it because they didn't boo. They didn't throw no tomatoes. And uh, <laughs> that's, 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 I didn't count those achievement. I didn't right count those. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started uh, performing in my city. And then Dr. Bobby Jones invited me on his show. Wow. And then he presented me. And he told me, this is how I started doing stand up. This, if you want to know that part. Yeah. He said, Trina, he said, I love what you're doing. He said, but my show is 30 minutes and your skits <laughs> are 35. <laughs> 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 he said, I need you to go home. I, I cried all the way home. I was on the train. I cried all the way home because I thought I had messed up and he would never invite me again. No. So I want you to go home and look at someone that you that inspire you and find out how to internalize your comedy. And I that word, you know, over and over in my mind, how do I do this? How do I do this? So I got uh, Bill Cosby, I got Sinbad, and I got Whoopi Goldberg. Okay. Um, Three uh, good ones. Three good ones. Three good. And and they, they they didn't these two of them didn't curse and Whoopi Goldberg was suspect. And uh <laughs> <laughs> suspect. So they taught me, they taught I'm sorry, I mean I'm at the turn my watch off. They taught me how to um how to do stand up, how to take like the 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 person in the neighborhood, because he would go, you know, Camille was upstairs and uh I said, Camille, put that in that radio. Oh, you know, Camille came downstairs. So he turned what he would actually see yeah. into uh, into a stand-up comedy uh, bit. So I stopped saying, boy, stop messing with my mailbox, too. That was a boy messing with my mailbox. And I asked him, is it your mailbox? Then get away from it. I'm not your mama. Well, I'm not your dentist, either, but I'll snatch out every two step of the one that hurt. <laughs> so... That's how I started doing stand up, and I took all my comedy that I did in skits, and I rewrote and rearranged them, and I became uh, the gospel stand up comedian. And that's now, were you were you funny in school? Oh uh, yes, I was. I I was the person that you did not want. We called it snap. We would snap us yeah. four. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look like about my your age, mama especially so. him. Yeah, yeah especially <laughs> yeah, your mama. So especially him at the top. But I'm anyway, only twenty five. <laughs> Uh, yes, and everybody scoot back because God go get you. Anyway, <laughs> but I was I was I was quick with my snaps, and I could make them rhyme. That's what was so cold about it. I would just I would whip you down to nothing. You would rather fight me than to come up with words against me. And everybody was ah. Oh. So we would have a snap contest. We would have a score contest, and then snap your face on the ground. Your mama looked down. So we did all of that. And that's kind of how I cut my teeth on comedy. 
by, by just being funny in class. And I was, I would get X for self-control, X in respecting the rights of others, X in talking in class, X in not being able to be quiet in class, X for chewing gum. But I got all ones and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you knew I was going to do something. You knew I was going to be something. Now yeah. I was going to ask you, but I wasn't going to say class clown. <laughs> Uh, did you keep the students laughing? That was going to be my question in class. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Everyone, I was, when the teacher would leave, I would pretend I was the teacher. And I would, uh -uh. and I was good at mimicking folks. So I would be the teacher. We had a teacher at the time. Uh, Miss Sandy, which one is Miss Sandy? Down there in the pink? Yes. Miss yes. Sandy, I'm, I'm not making fun of her. I'm just telling you, I did not notice at the time that I was in class. Uh, she would shake and talk at the same time. So now we know it's, it's called to be Sarah Palsy. But then we didn't know. Mm. And she would, she would be shaking. Right. And so I would get up in class. And so when she leave, I go, now class, I, I want you to know something. And the class would just fall out and be on the floor just rolling. And I say, my name is Mr. Mrs. Parker, park your car, sir. And so <laughs> they would laugh. And one time she came in and caught me. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. back then we got paddled. So <laughs> she called him Mr. Davis. And then wow. even after he paddled me, Mr. Davis and Miss Parker went outside and I did Mr. Davis. <laughs> 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 so, yes. I made them laugh in class too. Yes. <laughs> Jeffrey Lentis. So are you go. the baby? Uh-huh. Are you the baby of, of your my family? of my adopted family? I I mean of my biological family. I'm the I'm the youngest. I'm the baby. Uh my sisters and my sister and brother, we were uh dispersed as kids because my mother took sick and then my father remarried and you know she didn't want us. We had that stepmother that didn't want us. And mm. so I stayed with an aunt. And my brother stayed with a sister, with, with her sister, which was an aunt. And then my sister stayed with my grandmother. And then my brother stayed with my father. So I was the baby. And then of my biological family, uh, a lady by the name of Mildred Winstead took me in at 14. And she kind of like helped finish raising me. My aunt Shirley Ash raised me, but she kind of helped raise me. So today I call her mom and all her kids are my sisters and brothers. And I'm the oh. oldest of that bunch. Oh. Yeah. Let me ask you a question real quick. Um, yes. And I, it's, it, we're going to slow it down for just a second. I had a question. Uh, let's go back to your dyslexia. Uh -huh. um, in school, uh, did it pose you uh, some difficulties? Yes. Um, okay. In school, uh, describe what those were. Because um, you said because you said you can remember things a, a different kind of way than other people. So uh, yes. I had I had difficulty in, in class because of the dyslexic, and in my I remember in my fifth grade um, they did a a test. You know how they test you test your skills and test your mm -hmm. you know abilities or whatever, and verbally uh, oral uh, oral test I I was way off the charts, but yeah, when I was trying to write it down, couldn't do nothing. So by the time I got into sixth grade, I had a teacher who was she was a white teacher and she recognized it in me okay. because she would tell me to spell stuff and all the, all the letters would be there but they would be in the wrong in the wrong spot like mm -hmm. she would tell me to spell girl and i spell grill she told me my e's was threes my s's were fives just everything was you know turned around so she called me out to school one day and she said trina she said i noticed that you uh you have a, a disability and i was like i looked down i'm like i got both my hands and my feet what are you talking about she said it's your <laughs> your learning ability and I was like huh she said you struggle she said because I would write real tiny because I didn't want them to know I couldn't spell you know I, I was wow. misspelling the words wow. and so she said so she went she took me back to basics she gave me a third grade or second grade writing tablet and she made me write my alphabets real big so she relearned me retaught okay. me how to how to do stuff and then she said uh, when you spell associated, when you spell door, look at the door and spell door. So I was almost like Miss Silly on the color purple, <laughs> putting a little tag on stuff. <laughs> That's kind of how I had to relearn because everybody had skipped me on because of my personality and because right, I was right. good at everything else except for spelling. And so she took me back and she helped, she didn't hold me back. She just kept me after school mm -hmm. and we kind of went over a lot of things. And then she taught me how to uh, associate things. 
and that's how I started growing my wealth of no because I would she gave they gave me a poem and the poem was three pages long and I was in the third grade and so I came back the next day and I said I know it and they said the teacher said you could know it you could know this you you know third grade I don't know how old I was but like eight nine seven I don't know how old I was yeah whatever age that was so <laughs> she said you couldn't possibly know this Trina I'm gonna give you a couple more days I said I know it and she said what she said okay re recite it and I said Mr. Nobody, Arthur Unknown. I know a funny little man that's quiet as a mouse that does the mystery that is done in everybody's house. And she said, what are you looking at? I said, the words? Yeah. She said, you looking at the words? I said, yes. And then I turned the page with my head and then I started mm. doing other. And she said, you have photographic memory. And I was like, yeah. okay. Wow. <laughs> and, and that's how, that was my tools for learning. I, I would see it and memorize it. And I would mirror it because I couldn't mm -hmm. write it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and kudos to that teacher, friend. though. Yeah. Is kudos to that teacher to, to yeah. recognize that and to care enough to work with you. Yes. And that doesn't yes. happen. That's a, a miracle. Because it don't that, happen. All the time. I yeah. heard that as I got older, and her name was Mrs. Corn. I called her Mrs. Corn, but uh, she was the one who uh, she held me back, and she was she me and her was the same height. So <laughs> I remember, like, she looked me in my eyes. She said, Trina. I've got to, before you go to junior high, you need to learn this. And so mm -hmm. she gave me the third grade, everything. She took me back. She made me read uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill to get a pail of water. And she made me spell Jill because I was spelling it wrong. I was I was adding eyes. I didn't know my difference between there and there and there, where, where, and where. Uh, wrong, I, I, I yeah, knew, yeah, yeah I, I didn't know. Hope, it. no, no, no. <laughs> it's yeah, so. Yeah, well, most people don't know it either, but uh, right. I really didn't know it, and I didn't know how to spell any of them. It just I just put, I knew it started with a T H E, and whatever else went after that, it got real small. <laughs> okay. And so she taught me well. how to how to do it, and, and as an adult, yeah. I I was able to uh, to you know transfer that into my work right. my work uh, ethics and everything else. So that's how I learned. That's so awesome. now, did they retrain your brain? So are you still? Uh, I'm still. Yeah, I, st I still have it, but oh. not as uh, as bad. And then I found out from because, like I said, I was two or three when my mom uh, took sick. I found out from my uh, when I went to back to stay with my my biological family that my mom had it, but she had it worse. She would talk backwards. She would like, "Mama, I call you, Shirley." So she was saying, "Shirley, Mama, call you." So she would say stuff backwards, mm -hmm. and so hers wow. was really, really, you know. And I, I guess, you know, it was passed down to me, but because of that teacher, she taught me how to control it. And so for extra credit, I could draw. So that's how I was passing my classes. I would just draw stuff along with my assignment and they would give me extra credit. Mm -hmm. And so they would look over my misspelled words and they would always have them in red, wrong, 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 wrong. I know what you're trying to say. And I would say at the end, I know what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so even when I got in high school, um, I had a teacher bring me in. She said, uh, Trina, you, your dyslexia is really, really bad. She said, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, uh, I'm giving you everything in picture. And this was in high school. She said, I'm going to give you everything in picture and I want you to um, transform it into words. So that's what she started doing with me. And then when I got to on my job and I started working at the bank, the bank lady called Ooh. me and she said, she said, Ms. Jeffrey, uh, we noticed that all the all the numbers and letters are here, but they're all in the wrong spot. So she said, what we're going to do is we're going to take you off of this and we're going to put you on something else. So everyone recognized it, but we didn't know what it was called until I got grown, mm -hmm. which is dyslexia. They mm -hmm. just said I, I got things backwards. And uh, but I had like uh, my, my locker was always in disarray, but everything else was neat. So that was my chaos. So mm -hmm. I, I, I have a chaos room. So mm -hmm. my room is always chaotic. But my house is always clean. Oh, so I can blame. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take yes. it. I'm gonna take it. And I just told him, you know, well, I got one room that's clean and the rest yes. is chaotic. Yes, okay. it's chaotic. Just everything, just everywhere. Just, but you know where everything is. You can't move oh, anything because yeah. I know it's been moved. Yeah. And mm -hmm. my my mom used to say, "How do you function in this room?" I said, "I know where everything is. Don't touch nothing." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then Gallo, I, I've learned. Brandon. Go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna say this is not a joke. Uh, were mm -hmm. you in special ed? No, I never was because I was very. 
when so uh, let me let me let me say this as well. They took me to a, a specialist, and he put like those little things in your forehead, in your head, and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And they told me I was borderline genius because mm-hmm. what I hear, what I hear once, I have to turn it around twice. Where you hear it only once, it could turn it around. So I turn it around twice in the same time you turn it around once. So mm-hmm. when I ask you a question, you hear it and can immediately answer it. But when I when you ask me a question, sometimes you'll see me and then I can still answer it, but I'm turning it around twice before you can turn it around once. So he said I was borderline genius. And a lot mm-hmm. of my creativity comes out of my dyslexia. Mm-hmm. Because he yeah. said he told me I was a and I, I got A's in everything. I, mm-hmm. I graduated with honors. Yeah. College. Wow. And and, and uh, you and you were verbal. I was verbal. I was you, more verbal. You, you, some some children um uh, are have problems if they have dyslexia they also have verbal problems Mm -hmm. but because you could speak so clearly because they could very well test you verbally and you would Mm -hmm. answer the questions and have them all correct all correct that's what one teacher right that's what one teacher tested me she wouldn't get uh she said i'm trina she called me after class she said i'm not gonna give you a, a, a physical test i'm gonna test you uh verbally and so she'd ask me the question, boom, I was giving them to them just like that. Mm-hmm. And she said, okay. And she would give me my grades from that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing about thing about special ed. If you you may have a a a uh, uh, a challenge, mm-hmm. but if your grades are good, they can't put you in the, the special, special ed, ed because it's not it doesn't affect you uh educationally you may have right. it but if it doesn't right. affect your grades then they, they won't put you in that's so but true they, but they I'll, should do you know they should do some interventions though for you like seems like she did that for you like she did and they actually, did a lot of commendation be, for her right like, because i talked a lot and because i knew and i understood and and my uncle he drilled me as a sergeant before I even started going to school. So I knew my ABCs. I knew my one, two, threes. I knew everything. I knew my maps, my map colors. I knew everything. So mentally, I knew it. And they wanted to, to put me into the next grade. But my mm-hmm. aunt knew that I had this problem, so she wouldn't let them. She said, no, mm-hmm. let her stay where she's at. And uh, But I, I still wind up graduating early. Um, I in my, in my fourth grade, I only had one class. And that was social science because I didn't take it in one of those grades I was supposed to take it in. Uh, somehow we skipped it. And so I only had one class in my 12th. And I went there and then I went to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and I graduated with honors there and in college. I went to a business college and I graduated with honors mm-hmm. there as well. But I, I talk a lot, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. What was your first big break? I mean, mm-hmm. other than, you know, we know you went to Bobby Jones, but when did you know that you know what i think this is this something is going on here uh well i was at a conference um it was in dallas and me myself and, and uh ken k mine were the um were the uh special guests but the special special guest was kirk franklin and so we had done this conference before and i was the uh mc and the uh, mediator, and then you know, KK Moms did, you know, they did that, and then I did comedy in between. So I would MC and do comedy, MC, and keep the kids going. But then uh, there was a particular thing I had to do. Uh, this particular conference, they wanted me to do a, a serious skit called um, called the Tasha skit. And in this skit, uh, Tasha is um, dealing with drugs. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is the Bertha story, the Bertha story. And so she was dealing with drugs and I did the whole skit and I, the kids were crying. And then I had this lady to sing while I was ministering the skit. Caused all the kids to be out on the floor. They was all laid out prostrate. The, I mean, the audience just, it was crazy. It was a crazy day. And then Ken K. Mines uh, did, uh, dun, 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 dun. I could see them doing it. I just can't mm-hmm. see say the song, but they was doing theirs. And then that just was icing on the cake and Kirk was there and he cried like a baby. And he said, I'm going to take y'all out on tour with me. He said, I want y'all to do what y'all are doing. I want to take y'all out on tour with me. And this was the tour of life. And I was like, okay. And I had just previously to this did my first recording, which was Go Cantaloupe, Go Cantaloupe, Go. But it hadn't been released yet. And I was like, okay. So my manager made all the deals and stuff like that. We went out on tour. And so people thought 
I lived in that city. Every city we went to, they thought I lived in the city. So I had to go back to Kirk and I said, Kirk, people are not responding to me because they think I'm a local. They don't think I'm a part of this tour. So you've got to validate me. So we wrote a skit to say for me and Kirk so they would know I was a part of the, the tour. Yeah, smart. And that's kind of how it kind of, everybody started gravitating to me. Oh, she's not just, you know, somebody Rudy Pooty, but on the stage, <laughs> she, she's actually with the tour. And so, and then he put me inside, because I only opened up. So then he, he put me inside. So I did the skit that he saw me do. And so I, I condensed it, of course. And then I introduced Fred Hammond. And while I was doing the skit, Fred Hammond was on the stage playing. He started, he, he just wrote the song about me. And then yeah. he opened up and it's all that. And then I went and did something for Yolanda. So he had intertwined me in the, in, the, in the scene. So that kind of validated me. Well, while I was on tour, I didn't even know that my, at the time it was a video, had dropped. And um, so my manager said, oh, Trin, you get some good response about your video. And I was like, really? I haven't even seen it yet. He said, you haven't seen it? So he took me to the store. Uh, we, I think it was in Philadelphia. And we went in there and my face was everywhere. And I was like, oh my God. And people were started running toward me. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> And it was like, can we have your autograph? And they was buying, it was, they was like buying the DB, uh, the video like crazy. Wow. And I was like, oh my God. And I started signing them there. And that's when I figured out, okay, this is something that I can do. So that's <laughs> wow. <laughs> At that time. Yeah. That's a big beginning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice that. Well, we're going to take a break and okay. uh, we're going to come back. But uh, when we come back, I want you to tell us about your church life. Okay. And your your life at church. Um, this is okay. the Tiny Rose Show. We are right here with Sister Cantaloupe, and she is really giving us all of that, all of the information. <laughs> so if you got an aspiring whatever that right. uh, you might want to tune in, all right? Even if it's you that's aspiring, tune in. We'll tune be right in. back after this. this he knows it. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> he knows it. All right, he knows we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Tell me something. Have you ever thought about doing business online? Are you passionate about e-commerce? Well, you should give Willie and Dottie Hamilton a call. With their expertise, they'll help you launch your own free website, use your social media skills, and follow a proven success system. For more information or to book a Zoom presentation, contact the Hamiltons by email. That's Hamilton Willie at sbcglobal.net or by phone at 313-312-8905. Again, that's 313-312-8905. Once you've experienced the Hamilton's professionalism, you'll be sold out. The Rhythm of Gospel Awards congratulates Ellen Hayes, an eight-time nominee of the 2023 Rhythm of Gospel Awards, for her latest album release, We Owe It All to You, for Contemporary CD of the Year, Special Event CD of the Year, Traditional CD of the Year, Rhythm of Gospel CD of the Year, Producer of the Year, Traditional Female Vocalist of the Year, Traditional Artist of the Year. Praise and Worship Female Vocalist of the Year. Ellen needs your votes. Voting is unlimited and ends on March 5th, 2023. You must vote in all categories for submissions to be valid. Cast your vote today and share the news. Go to TheRhythmOfGospelAwards.com. TheRhythmOfGospelAwards.com. It's all. We are WVTC Detroit. What it is. What it is. We're gospel music. Preaching. Teaching. Inspiration. Encouragement. News. And guest interviews. We are. What it is. 
W-B-T-C. We're winning victories. One Through Christ. W-B-T-C. Detroit. All up in the community. That's who we are. What Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life when I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever more. Surely his goodness yes, and mercy shall follow me. We are back right here. That was Dwell in the House, none other than that's Greg G.P. Pearson, and none other than than Sherry Nunberry right here from Detroit, and they're doing their thing, and we love it, love it, love it. We are here right now, right now, as we speak, live. Uh, (laughs) That's how they say at the circus, live. Live. Uh, We are live and in living color with none other than Sister Cantaloupe, y'all. That's what y'all know. Her name is Trina Jeffries. Uh, That's right. (laughs) She is right here with us, and we are talking to her, and she is just a wealth of information. Um, And a lot of things that you could probably uh, go back and see about your kids and your grandkids and Mm -hmm. see if that's what's going on with them. Right, right. Help them, you know. 
So um, tell us about growing up in church. Did you grow up in church? Or no? <laughs> of course. <laughs> woman, Who but... did not grow up in church? <laughs> uh, as I told you, I was uh, adopted out to an aunt. So she was Baptist. And so we went to, uh, uh, I love to say the name when I was a kid, because I was like real tiny and little and and everybody would call me in the room and say, what's the name of the church? I said, New Jerusalem Institutional Baptist Church. So that was the name of our church. And uh, growing up there, I learned, of course, the Baptist way, you know, the down at the cross and all the hymns and stuff like that. So that was my teaching and learning. I got baptized twice um, because I wanted to be, I liked being in the water. I didn't really want to be baptized. I just wanted to get in the water. <laughs> My friends was going and saying, we're going to go swimming. Gonna go swimming go. <laughs> so I wanted to get in the tub. <laughs> so, wash me, uh, Jesus. Wash me, Jesus. So I was a uh, Baptist. And then when I went to stay with my mother's sister, which is Shirley Ash, and she, she raised me from like 12 up. Um, she was Church of God in Christ. So oh. I also, yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I kind of, we're not going to talk about that. But anyway, so I was church of God in Christ. So, you know, you had to wear the dresses, you know, you had to wear your hair a certain way. You could wear no makeup. You couldn't go nowhere. You couldn't do nothing. You couldn't listen to nobody. You just, you was just in your own little world. And with me being very active uh, in the mind, I created and wrote everything in, you know, in my head. So I had my own little movie going on. Mm-hmm. Um my aunt would come home and she was like, what was on the Cosby show today? And I would go from the beginning to the end. She never had to see the show. She saw the show through me. <laughs> so she was like, girl, how do you remember all this? I was like, I don't know, but I do. So, but in the church of God in Christ, I learned my, my, it gave me my foundation of, mm-hmm. of God, you know, and I learned uh, my Bible scriptures and my, you know, Sunday school lessons yeah. and everything. And, but the foundation of God, having a relationship with him and not just a friendship with God. Cause a lot of people mm. are friends with God. That I'm a friend, I'm a friend of God, but no, I have a relationship Some with God. Some of the folks just wave at him. Honey. Right. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. wave at him and stuff. And I, I learned that because as I said on, at the bottom of my uh, resume that he wrote, that he read, um, God is the only daddy I, I've known because when my daddy gave me away at two, he never came back to see me. I didn't see him again until I was 26. Mm. And so everybody became mom and dad. Uh, anywhere I would go, any show I would do, if they were an older, uh, specifically aged person, I would call them mom and dad. And, and they would call me daughter. Mm-hmm. Even at church, my pastor was maybe, I'm say six years older than me, but because of his respect, I would call him dad. And he started calling everybody, you know, give, giving everybody daughter because everybody saw me call him dad and they start calling him dad, uh, Bishop David E. Martin. And so that was just my, you know, my honor to, to them. So being in, in the church of God in Christ gave me a lot of the, uh, the stability that I have and the wealth of knowledge of God and, and, and okay. just knowing the scriptures and knowing, you know, my worth. And, uh, but they, they were so strict that it caused me, uh, to be more, more judgmental than I needed to be, mm. uh, to me, yeah, but for me, I get it. because yes, I was very judgmental on everybody. You know, I, I, even when we were out with other artists and they were so free to be themselves and I was so rigid and y'all so, ain't say, ain't y'all ain't say, so. y'all ain't going to hell. You're going yeah, to hell. Yeah, Jesus don't that. love you. He don't even know your name. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but when I, I started growing up in uh and 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 knowing God for myself, and yeah. that's why the scriptures say, know Him for yourself. You know, be able to recognize God and and and, and rightly divide the Word of God. Because some people, and, and I don't, I can't remember where it's located, but I know I read it, and it says some people said I've spoken when I have not said a word, and a lot of people are putting words in God's mouth to mm. use it against you, and so mm. that's the kind of thing that people were trying to impart in me so when I see people I would use words that did, wasn't even in the scripture just mm-hmm. something that I heard and and so God had to had to shake me up and he had to strip me down and strip me all of that not saying church of God Christ is bad yeah it's yeah, just that yeah, it's yeah. just a, it depends on who you grew up with in that church of God in Christ yep. mm-hmm. it's not it's not the and that the, was the back religion. then that back was then, back yes. They back were very then, conservative were, back then. Baby, baby, you <laughs> didn't, you didn't, no listen, 
Listen, when I first started doing Sister Cantaloupe and my pastor, because I always look young. I've always looked, not looked my age. I'm 61. I've uh, never looked uh, my age. I would have, uh, yeah. You, everybody, everybody, you everybody. I have no wrinkles. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm a unicorn. That's God, my sister God called. blessed you, honey. <laughs> yes, he did. So when I was in my 20s and started trying to do comedy and, and other churches, other churches got in crisis, wanted me to come over there. My pastor said no. He said, no, she's not coming anywhere. She, uh, she's not old enough. And uh, and I don't want nobody imparting anything in you that 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 I haven't given. So I was 25 or 26 and I couldn't go nowhere. I, he wouldn't let me go anywhere. All if you they wanted to see me, they had to come to to the church and people were hearing about me and wanted me to come. So I would put on shows at the church and I would have a big crowd, but I couldn't go nowhere. I couldn't go and speak. I couldn't do nothing. And so one day he took me to the, to the side and he said, you know, I, when you get 20, I said, Pastor, I'm 26. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you what? Like, yeah. The flesh and blood didn't reveal that. <laughs> didn't reveal that to you. If you're not a real true prophet. I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so he, said, he said, oh, okay, okay. So, so then he started allowing me to go you know, a few places. It had to be on a Friday or a Saturday. It couldn't be on a Sunday, you know. Mm. So we had, I had guides and, and guidelines. And then when I, I went to, uh, our, uh, uh, I mean, an international contest and I won like, uh, it was uh, New York and LA and I won all of these. I won so many awards. It was crazy. And I was the only black on stage at all given time. And I was just winning, 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 winning. And so I won 21, I won 21 all together. I won 11 in California and I won 10 in New York. And so the casting people was like, hey, you need to come to New, New York. If you can make it to New York, you make it anywhere. So I told him I was, you know, moving out of town and he was like, oh, he was like really scared. Oh my God, you're going to New York, blah, blah, blah. But he allowed me to go. And when I got to New York and I became up under my uh, uncle, who was my step uncle, he, he kind of ripped all that stuff away from me. He started pulling all those traditions off of me. He started like, you know, renewing my mind and, and, and he called it stinking thinking. Like, he, yeah. because, yeah. yeah. So he started ripping all of that and all that stuff started falling off and it started just falling to the ground and I could really see people for who they were and not everybody was going, everybody was the devil, you know, <laughs> it was going to hell. So that opened up my, my eyes to, to see people uh, gay, straight, Jew, Gentile, black, white, you know, everyone as a person yes. and look for their personality and not their persona of yes. what they what they put forth. Yes. And so I had to learn how to look up underneath things and God allowed me to do that. And that's how I kind of that's broke that, that mold. Yes. Yeah, that's a gift. And, the, yeah. and then when I finally came to California uh, years later, Bishop Noel Jones, he really like, took the rest of that because I was bent but I wasn't broken. He broke the rest of it off of me and he was like we was getting ready to have a revival he said people are coming because I was a $21 giver because that's what we were taught at church. You, $21 line $10 line $5 line. You, know, you remember the lines. And so, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? so I was that person. I was that person. You know like I, I won't go get blessed unless I gave my $21. God won't go do nothing unless I gave my $21. And so he said we're having a revival. And I had this is my, I think I was there a month, and it was getting ready to happen. He said, "Listen," he said, "They're gonna bring bring bless hankies, bless toothpicks, bless, bless socks." He said, "But let me tell you something, you don't have to pay for a blessing." No. He said, "I give you free, I give you free information every Sunday, and I, and you just give an offering." He said, "Any blessings that you get, you don't have to pay for." Them. No. He said, "So if you give your lunch money." You give your light money, you give your gas money. The church ain't giving it back. Yeah. So be away. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he never asked for a line. This is my first church that I'd been to that they didn't have a line to give money. And I was like, what is the second offering? They said, there is no second offering. I said, this is the only offering? They was like, this is the only offering. So I'm, I'm passing the trade mm -hmm. going, this is it? He said, you put your tithes and your offering in the same bucket and pull it off. And I was like, wow, I'd never seen that before in my life. I was so bound. Mm -hmm. And he re he redid my whole thinking. And now I am, I I still have the teaching, but I don't have the tradition. 
you don't you're not held by it. Hell by it. Yeah, I'm not hell bound by it. And yeah. I'm not sending everybody to hell. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, it even freed me in my comedy. It freed me in my comedy because I would do different comedy and different this and different. I was scared to say this and afraid to say that. And I was walking t you know, oh, I'm sorry. I was always asking for forgiveness. But he said, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Why am I apologizing for something that he's already given me? So mm -hmm. I stopped apologizing. I stopped doing it. And I found my voice. And I've been speaking ever since. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that's my that's church. Beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. Mr. Canelo, could you talk about an experience you had that was not funny, but you were able to laugh at it later? Oh, which one? You want to talk about? <laughs> we all got that. Uh, mm, 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 yes, uh, relationships. Uh, in that, in in that, that I have never been married and no children, and I was very, uh, I was very, and I can't say uh, down on the Church of God in Christ, but they they kept me so that I never experienced love from uh, from the opposite sex because they taught us so much. Keep your legs closed. Put the dime between your legs. You know, walk, walk like a duck. You know, it was just it was so much. And I was that person that was so naive that I believed everything, anything that came out of their mouth because it was supposed to be the truth, and it was. But I didn't know later on, as I got older, that those same people that was teaching me was doing things that they were supposed to be doing. My Lord, my Lord. And they was married with. And had other other. children you with each other and had children outside of the marriage. And it was it was like, what? And so now I use it sometime in my comedy. Is that what you mean, sir? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but you know, I have, you know, it says dated. That wasn't know, funny, but I laugh at it. It was funny. I laugh at it all the time because I always wanted a son. And I told my 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 mom and my, my sister and brother, if I had married a guy, his name was Bubba Gum, my child was gonna be named Bubba Gum Jr. Okay. So, okay. So that was it. Now yeah. your 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 good friend uh, Greg is on, and he says that you're the queen of clean, including Johnny Carson. Now you've been on Johnny Carson, Jay Len Leno. No, no, no. I don't. Greg, stop, <laughs> stop just typing stuff. I don't think he's saying that. Read that again. <sighs> I don't think he's saying that. Media Queen of Clean. Okay, she's the Queen of Clean, in, including Johnny Carson. Well, Johnny Carson ain't a queen, is he? Uh, I, I don't know. know. See, I don't know. I'm trying to compare. See, great, great. They, you know, might be a. I, you know, I don't know what these people do. After I'm but helping you out, Greg. You know, maybe Greg know him personally. Uh, I maybe don't know. He know. Maybe he know. How Greg, to stop, stop. stop. Yeah. So, he just um, want his name to be called. That's our Greg Owens. We love you, baby. So we know <laughs> that you'll be there on uh, May the 20th. But I, I do know that you have to leave. But I want you to talk to us about you have something coming up. Uh, yes, I have several uh, events coming up. First of all, I'm in California now, and I'm doing uh, commercials. I just did a Discover commercial. Uh, wow. Yeah, I did a healthcare.gov commercial. I've done uh, Orkin and Denny's and all those commercials like that. So what? I got three more coming up that I'm waiting on the callbacks. If I get the callbacks, you know, then I, I do them. If not, then I'll, I, I won't be able to do them, of course, because they didn't call me back. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm here. Okay. I'm here until April uh, finishing out the uh, they have a season. Uh, it's a peak season. And so commercials are, are in peak season. Like for, for now, this is February. We've already done Valentine's, so February we'll be doing like Easter, and Easter you do, you know, like Mother's Day, Mother's Day you do Father's Day, kind of like that. So those are that's how their commercials go. So, uh, <clears throat> but I kind of like go back to Dallas uh, in April. So coming up, I have a show in uh, it's called Lake City, uh, Florida, okay. and Lake it's a uh, Lake City, Florida. It's right outside of Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. So, cause, cause that's where I fly into. So, but anyway, um, I'm doing a show there and it's a full, a full show. And then I am also the director and, uh, of this, of a play called, uh, Sp spare the rod, spoil the child. And I also acted it and I play my own twin. Yeah. Okay. Figure that one out. 
And so, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and the name of the uh, person that's doing the play is uh, Dr. Mildred Summerfield. She wrote it. And we've done maybe, I'm going to say 10, 10, uh, 10 of them. And we were getting on a roll and getting ready to take it out on the road and everything. And then COVID hitting and everything shut down. Yeah, so we're yeah. putting it back up and we're redoing it. Uh, this time, first we had uh, Dorinda Clark Cole was in it once. Uh, Leandra Johnson was in it. Um, we had uh, Pastor Shirley Caesar that was in it. This time going out, we'll have Pastor Shirley Caesar. We'll have uh, Terry Phillips from, uh, yeah, that's it right there. Ter Terry Phillips from, uh, and uh, Chris Collins from uh, Tyler Perry's plays. We have uh, Edge Spite. She is, uh, I mean, Alexa Spite. She's, she won um, one of the winners of uh, Sunday's Best. And mm -hmm. then we have Carolyn Trailer. We have a plethora of that's people. That's girl, Carolyn. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Get them. yes. Yeah, she gonna burn them up. She gon she light them on fire and then she <laughs> then she spit on them and put them out. That's, that's a fire. <laughs> that's, that's a fire. fire. Now, that's a fire. That's a fire. So, so we have a we have a plethora of actors and everybody that's on there wow. is a beautiful artist and can sing and and does an amazing, amazing job. Of course, you know Pastor Shirley Caesar's gonna do her thing, thank this one. And uh she she loves it when I say it like that because she makes her young. She, I said, Pastor, you be doing your thing, Thizzle. She said, thank you, daughter. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so that's what's going on. It's going to be July the 29th. It's in Savannah, Georgia. It's going to be amazing. Mm. And uh, so I'm now, I'm directing this one again, and I'm I'm uh, uh, rehearsing all the uh, the cast. That's what I have to do after I get off of here is rehearsal. Now, that's uh, one that, that everybody, you can get a plane ticket for. Yes. And just fly in and make it a yes. nice weekend. Yes. Um, yes. And, and just fly in and do yes. it. And that's your weekend it's trip. It's gonna be amazing. And uh the the person that was in it before we we honor him in his passing, uh Sh uh Sean McLemore. I uh, I don't know if any of y'all oh. remember him. He used to sing with Cortez uh Cortez, uh the singer Cortez the Harvey or whatever his name is. They did a song called uh Better. Mm -hmm. Better, better. Uh, anyway, so he he passed away. So he was the uh, father in this play, and mm -hmm. now we had to recast. So that's what I'm doing. I'm recasting and re putting people in spots. So, but uh, y'all pray for his uh, wife, which is Rhonda McLemore. Uh, yeah, and he's only he's, he passed, I think, last year. So it hasn't been. It's still it's still new to us too. It's still and we're gonna honor him oh, that, the night of the thing. Yeah. Still fresh for us, but he was hilarious. He could sing. He was crazy. We loved him, and something was wrong with him. Uh, <laughs> but we enjoyed it. And then, like I say, I play uh, the older, uh, the grandmother, and then I come back and play my twin as Sister Cantaloupe. So, okay. Are you uh, going to play to LA? Huh? I'm sorry. Are you going to bring the play mm -hmm. to Los Angeles? Uh, so it's not my play. I'm just a director, and we're waiting on to see what the the actual producer of the play is going to do. This is uh, Dr. Mildred Summerfield's play, so she she picks the the spots and stuff that, well, that we go to, in. Tell her to go to L.A. Tell her to come to Detroit. Do I'll right. do that. I'll do that. <laughs> and everybody wants it in Texas too. So she got a plethora of she got a plethora of you know, people that want her, but you know, yeah. it's the she got to get the money to get the money. To do the things to get the money, that's you know, true. So, yeah, yeah. So everybody, you know, it don't so make she, dollars. It don't make sense. It don't make sense, and so <laughs> and then she still got to play pay her cast members whether it it wins or lose, and so yeah. she's trying to yeah make that's right. That. But also, I am uh, the house host in Dallas at the Junior Black Academy of Arts and Letters with uh, Curtis King, and uh, okay. so yeah, so I do that every. Uh, they have like the summer months and the winter months, so we're not forty six year and so this um, in march we'll have small fry will be our oh, guest okay. uh, com comedian yes All right. so yeah. we're gonna have well, a they want to know how to get in touch with you oh you can go to uh of course www.gosistercantaloupe.com and that's g-o spell sister cantaloupe all the way out s-i-s-t-e-r C A N T A L O U P E at sistercantaloupe.com go on my website you can book me. You can see what I've done. You can see where I've been and see everything. I'm, I need a web guy to, to update everything. You know, everybody kind of went down, uh, you know, during COVID. So I need somebody else to come and help lift my, my website. That's it right there. Go sistercantaloupe.com. And you can book me, talk to me. You can send me a message there. I'm also on all social media. I'm on uh, 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 Instagram, Facebook, and I have my own website page. I have my own YouTube channel. And I'm yeah. stream live. You can stream my music 
uh, you can stream my music. I mean, my music, but my comedy. I do music in there. You can just stream my comedy um, uh, live as well. So, uh, Sister Cantaloupe is my YouTube page. Uh, Trina Jeffrey. Y'all have it spelled J E F F R I E S, but it's just J E F F R I E. It's just one of me. Yeah. Yeah. There we go, right there. So, uh, yeah, you can reach me any kind of way. You could just type in Sister Cantaloupe. Just start typing in Sister and put C A N T A. And uh, it's just T-A-L-O-U-P-E. T-A-N-T-A-L-O-U-P-E. You can't win for <laughs> losing. <laughs> Told y'all I could say. <laughs> but we, I was up a we, love you, we love you. We love you. I and love you. Also. Great. And maybe we'll have Friday Night Funnies on uh, WBTC. And so people can tune in because the world needs a smile. That's so true. That's so true. I always say, God says, he who sits on the throne laughs. He who yeah. sits on the throne, he laughs. And when he made you, he started laughing. He's like, what? Awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. Sandra, uh, Sandy, I thank you so much. Uh, I want to give a shout out to you. You are doing the doggone thing out here in this world. God loves you. Uh, us artists, we uh, we appreciate you just uh, allowing a platform for us to come in and just share our ministry because you know, nowadays, uh, all the radio stations have shut down, the televisions and stuff, but you are still holding strong. So we thank you so much for just allowing us to be a part of your world and your and your other uh, hostess. I appreciate you as well. Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, Amen. we love you and there's absolutely nothing you nothing can do you can about do. it. Bye. That's right. That's right. And we will be out to support you yes, and ma'am. make thank sure you. that that you uh do what you do because you're doing it for the kingdom and you're yes, helping ma'am. God's people. You know what I'm thank saying? Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and you, you know, it's this like, every artist is jumping I give, off buildings, you know. Right. So many are committing suicide, so many people. And 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 I want to give you a little insight into that, and I'm done. Reason people, reason a lot of the artists are getting so depressive is because Everything we do, we've been scrutinized and we've been criticized and we've been, yeah, people are uh, taking everything we say and taking it out of context and making things happen or seem to happen that is not happening. And so mm-hmm. that is making a lot of the artists depressed over that. But I want to say to you artists, know who you are and whom you are. If you go back to the Lion King, he asked him, who is your daddy? Who's your father? Mm-hmm. You've got to remember that God is your father. That's so right. whatever people say about you, they say it about Jesus Christ. Don't worry about it. You know who you are in That's Jesus' right. name. Amen. All Amen. right. All right. Yes, well, we ma'am. love you. Um, love you. We're gonna be. We're gonna take a little break. And this is the Detroit Youth Choir. Y'all don't go nowhere because we got another special guest coming on right after this. But this is Dang. the Detroit Youth Choir. They were mm-hmm. on America's Got Talent. They didn't win, but they won just because they got there. All right. Hello. So we'll be right back after this. This is the Sandy Rose Show right here on WB. Love you, Sandy. Oh, oh. Desire 
right, all right, all right, all right. And that was none other than the Detroit Youth Choir who was on AGT. And we want to send a shout out to Mr. Anthony White, who is their leader. And another shout out to their management team, uh, Lavelle Nero, who's out there doing the doggone thing. All yeah. right. But we are here right now with, listen, this is our resident funny girl resident funny girl that's none other than crystal p is crazy how you doing girl i'm awesome how are you all doing is it still okay to say happy new year <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah, it's okay happy yeah, new year to they you. still got up christmas lights down the street and they turn them <laughs> on every night i have a couple of neighbors just like that they are full bloom out here i swear our jesus about to get up off the main to like look at here cut these lights off cut these <laughs> lights. <laughs> so what's going on in your world what is going on you know me i always am keeping busy even throughout the pandemic i uh I worked throughout the entire pandemic. A lot of people were losing work. I was like, look, the Lord still blesses even during the pandemic, even during the, during the midst right, of the storm. So I, I did a lot of online shows. I taught children how to bake from scratch online. I was featured on Fox 2 News here in Detroit. And just uh, trying to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. I'm writing my cookbook, getting that finished up. and. Right now, my focus is solely on my More Than the Eyes Can See show, which will be Saturday, March 25th in Southfield, right outside of Detroit, so the Detroit area. Wow. So you have the Silver Gardens Event Center, so people get to see me do both comedy and music that night. Okay. Wow. okay. You know, you got to you got to call. I told you uh, we had a uh, uh, one of the seniors came up to me. She said, Sister Rose, you know, we're in the middle of a panorama. <laughs> so it, we have not called it the pandemic here. It's been the panorama. The panorama. <laughs> that sounds like my mama. She doesn't call it coronavirus. It's the coronova. Coronova. <laughs> <laughs> the coronova like the car. Listen. Yes. So how is husband? How's everybody? Everybody is doing well. I really can't complain. You know, things come and go. We have one of the, uh, I call them my diamonds. My vocal support is called the diamonds. We have one of the diamonds. She has to have surgery, but, you know, we got to press on. So we yeah, went back down in the diamond mine and found us another gym. Like, and, what, uh, what, what did she sing? Because I might be able to back up. You know what, Miss Sandy? I'm going to let you be a rose and a, and a flower, okay? <laughs> now, y'all know my favorite flower is gold metal, but I'm going to let you be the flower up in here today. Yeah. I said, I don't get to come in. The last time I saw you all was way before the panorama. Uh, and I brought banana pudding inside the studio. And we loved you for it here. <laughs> Listen, we loved you for it. Yeah. We did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. That's what we found out. Yeah, I was, was going to ask you, uh, the last time you were on the show, uh, we were talking about maybe you could get a uh, a baking show on at some point. So, uh, you know, we got lots open. Yeah, so I actually, during the pandemic or the panorama, whichever one you want to refer to it, I began teaching children how to bake and doing classes online, but then it morphed into adults. Um, like Trina mentioned, a lot of people were depressed. And I was seeing people time after time on Facebook, oh, I'm depressed, oh, I'm bored, I'm this, I'm that. And I talked to my husband, I said, what do you think if I went online and start teaching how to bake, you know, from scratch? He said, you'll be great. And the first class, we jumped off with 50. We had two classes, 50 people. And it just went from there. And every week uh, people were telling people about it. And then I ended up not only doing the regular teaching classes, I started doing, you know how you have painting with a twist? Uh -huh. Okay. I had baking with a whisk. And so oh. I was doing online parties. So if it was your birthday, you would gather all your friends and I would do a private Zoom party and teach you and your friends how to make a particular dessert, you know, whatever your choice was or how many hours you wanted the class to be. Um, so I did that. I was doing the um, 
Oakland County, Jack and Jill. I did some of the sororities online and various different groups to keep people uplifted throughout the panorama. <laughs> so <laughs> I worked. I definitely worked. Well, look yeah, good. and and y'all yeah. know her her desserts look good. They taste good, but they look good too. And oh yeah, it, it almost you know, like you're like, did you do that for real? I and say that's pretty. They are beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're about not only appearance because I've seen some beautiful desserts. You just don't eat them. You know, you ever had somebody cake so dry, you just put some collard greens on your plate because it was like cornbread. We don't do that over here. Amen. No, that is not <laughs> what the Lord has anointed us to do. He's not calling for that in these last and evil days. What is your favorite dessert to cook? Oh, my favorite. Oh, man. Probably... It's a toss up between banana pudding and peach cobbler. Okay. But my favorite is German chocolate cake. I live 9284 South Wabash. <laughs> That's in China. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Send it on down. Send it on down. Send it on down. It's so funny because everybody has their favorite. You'll have people who say they absolutely don't like banana pudding, but they want red velvet cake. You have people that absolutely can't stand red velvet cake. They want German chocolate cake. And so everybody has their, their favorite. So I'm, I'm here to serve the multitude, okay? Roy <laughs> Madison said that one. <laughs> but then people don't know, Crystal, that you are just multi-talented. Not only do you bake, but you, you do comedy. You're an accomplished musician. You, you do it all. What What's going on with this play? What are you doing? In the, in, what is it? Is it so it's called More Than the Eyes Can See. And the reason why I call my show More Than the Eyes Can See is because I'm going to take you beyond your naked eye. Some people only know me as the comedian. Some people only know me as the baker. There are people in my lifetime that knew me as the hairstylist at Michigan State. And they'll hear my name and say, oh, I knew a Crystal P that did here. Uh-huh, and it's only one Crystal P. She does comedy. And they'll call me on the phone and realize they're talking to both about the same person. Okay. So I, what I do in this show is I bring every facet of Crystal P, or mostly, the, mostly all the facets, onto one stage so people can see um, what they don't really know about me. And they get a lot of background. And we do a full show. I mean, the comedy, the music, the instruments, the singing. Even one year, the first, the very first time I ever did this show was 2015. I cooked all of the food for the VIP. I don't like, I'm going to tell you right now, when I go to a show and I buy VIP, I cannot stand a cheesy VIP. So, Anybody knows that deals with me knows I don't do cheesy VIP. And we literally had string beans with smoked turkey and wow. chicken and potatoes and desserts they made by me. Punch, everything. It's a full um, VIP. You get a full quality professional show. My musical director is Demetrius Neighbors, which right. many people oh. in the church. Mm -hmm. He's okay. my musical director And he's also doing a performance at the show So he's doing a set as well And I tell people If you don't know who Demetrius Neighbors is Google him He's the one that produced Nobody for Kim Everybody loves Kim from Detroit And beyond because the shows always sell out But our, our, we give you professional musicians People that play for Charlie Wilson though. Mm -hmm. I've opened for Stephanie Mills I've opened for The Whispers I've opened for The OJs I've opened for um, Diana Ross, I've opened for Steve Harvey, just countless um, music in different genres. Hmm? You tell a joke, but you ain't no joke. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, man. Yes, I, I, I'm about my business. I will be celebrating 19 years in comedy this year, and um, I'll be celebrating just shy of 30 years in baking um, wow. this year. I've been professionally baking since 95. So it's, but there's still people that don't know me or don't know about me or quite know who I am. So I tell people, come to this show. You will not 
be disappointed. Every time I do this show, I bring a new surprise. Um, because you you know, they people say you can't teach your old dog new tricks, but I'm I'm still doing a couple of tricks here and there, okay? <laughs> okay. Well, listen, we're going to play this spot, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Y'all it's your girl, this. Crystal P, coming to you with more than the Eyes Can See show on Saturday, March 25th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the lovely Silver Gardens Event Center, located at 23450 Southfield Road. You don't want to miss this show. It's comedy, it's music, and of course, a few surprises. And most of all, it gives back to Lupus Detroit. So all my Lupus Warriors, I want to see you in the house. Got very special guest, Demetrius Neighbors. So you know we are about to bring it. Don't forget, more than the eyes can see, you can call 248-820-5449 or head to eventbrite.com. Search for more than the eyes can see. You cannot Your ticket, <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all better get them tickets listen she will be right yeah. there at the silver gardens amen amen now when is it gonna be again saturday march 25th show starts at seven and we do start on time i know That's detroit good. like to look good in their furs and alligators and all that but you're gonna show up on my show up time because you might miss something okay amen absolutely absolutely and we will be doing comedy a lot like i said i've been doing comedy for so long <laughs> so sometimes things just naturally come out my mouth i mean, i hate doing <laughs> online shows because i look at myself like girl look how fat you done got now y'all know this used to be a belly chain but it's a choker now <laughs> so i'm trying to lose some of this covid weight i am trying to lose some of this covid weight i'm so tired of sweating and smelling like buttermilk but it is gonna be a wonderful <laughs> wonderful show yes indeed listen y'all don't know that uh that what wvtc stands for we victorious today crystal so i'm gonna move past this okay. covid way okay <laughs> Yeah, you know, you had to put on a couple of, you know, you know, but it's yeah. all right. This we in the fast season now. You know, right. Fast. And I just lost six pounds too. So I'm I'm, I'm I'm sticking, I'm sticking with no sweets. I'm my last 30 days before the show, I said I'm be dedicated and get myself in line so I can give the people what they paid for. My VIP sold out. Right. <laughs> Wait, the, the tickets went on sale in October. VIP just went. <laughs> and mm. people are still calling for VIP. I'm like, ma'am, those tickets dropped in October. <laughs> and people want, that's the one thing I just like about the Detroit climate. Sometimes we just wait to the last minute. Last you want to wait to see who's going to be there. Me <laughs> and it's like, jump on it. That's why I don't wait. My friends know I go to concerts by myself. Because if you wait on people, you'll be sitting in the concession yeah. stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't go. I want to see the people. I don't want to see ants because I'm sitting so far away. Okay. But thankfully, in the uh, Silver Gardens, there really isn't a bad seat. But you know, some True. people just like True. to be. And actually, it's not called VIP. It's called VI Crystal P. So people know that they're going to get. <laughs> I'm going to keep my name out there. Listen, I'm going to have my name on everything i put my name on everything i brand everything yeah. and i bought my name i'm just waiting for them to confirm it with the government and everything that i say and do all right That's well uh, donald said he so he want to know where he can get a video paperback cookbook he want to get something just so something. the cookbook should i praying that this cookbook will be done by my birthday, which is April next month. And my oh. website is www.crystalpiscrazy.com. 
Yeah, crystalpiscrazy.com is the website. My nephew actually redesigned my website. So hopefully that will be up and running by the end of this week. And I love my website. I cried when I saw the preview of it, but we had to make a couple of changes. So hoping, hopefully the changes will be done by Friday and it'll be up and running. My old website is currently up, but thank God I got so much word of mouth work that I hadn't updated my website, but I said, I'm going to be good this year because there's things that I want to do. And I want people to be able to book me directly through the site and, you know, just take it to another level. Yeah. Another level. All right. All right. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we want everybody in Detroit and out of Dr again, these are good opportunities for a good weekend gig and, Spend the weekend Somebody and actually purchased the ticket out of Texas, out of the Dallas area. We got Dallas, mm -hmm, Dallas, Ohio, and I believe Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what people are doing now. When you want to go somewhere, you just get on the plane and you can go because they fly every day. That's right. Right. Every day, all day. You got train, bus, you know what the leader Adam said. You can take a caravan. Just get here if you can. Yes. It's, a, it's a way. Tricycle or bicycle. Come on. Skateboards, yes. Yes. roller skates, however you want to do. And yeah. definitely want to see my lupus warriors in the house because we're giving some of the proceeds to people, um, to Lupus Detroit and honoring the people who suffer from lupus. I was diagnosed yeah. in December of 2015. Mm -hmm. And actually, my stage manager, she has lupus. One of the diamonds has lupus. Um, so we're just celebrating each other and showing people that you can still live a productive life mm -hmm. regardless. We have lupus, but lupus does not have us. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, we appreciate you coming on today. Thank you for having we'll me. Support you, and we're going to run this commercial, although it ain't no more VIPs left, y'all. No more VIPs. Live. Yeah. I, I will let you know if I get another sponsor. We're in talks with another sponsor because these people would not let this VIP. I don't know what is so great about VIP. People want the VIP. So if the sponsor comes through and does some more VIP, I will let you all know that they have released some more tickets. All right, well, you got to let the saints know because you know the saints is used to sitting in a certain spot, child. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm one of them. I can't lie. I'm I'm one of them. I like my front row and all the little perks and things that come. I but I buy my stuff in advance. You but know, you I don't wait. Right. <laughs> no. Amen. But we appreciate you coming on. Um, Thank you for I, having I, me. We got any quick closing thoughts, saints? She's we love you, Chris. When the last time you've been in the township? Listen, you know, that's where I am from. And I, I was, know. my mom still lives there. Actually did a show for Mount uh, Hebron Missionary okay. Baptist Church. Yeah. So I love my townshippers, all my Ferndale slash town. You know, they say Ferndale because we don't have a post office. So <laughs> all my townshippers, I want to see you in the house, both the Ferndale and the Oak Park side of the township. But yeah. I'm always there because my mom still lives there and we take, you know, food and groceries over to my mom and okay. still the, the, the neighbors that haven't gone on to glory. We still go talk to them leave. and everything. But the that will in the town, always yeah. be my home no matter where I go. I don't care what status I attain. I am a Royal Oak Township girl from my head to my toe. Say that. All Me right. too. All right. Well, we thank you Say so much. No better place to be. We That's right. Thank you so much, Crystal, for being on the show. And we thank just want to make sure that we let everybody know about the arrangements for our good, good sister and friend, uh, Dr. Carol Cole. Carol and Cole. Yeah. Uh, I was sad to hear that. Yeah, we're going to play. We were going to play her song today, but y'all was laughing. And I said, mm, let's be a That wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time. You know, we no. were being spiritual. So no. uh, Monday, we're going to just open the show with her song, with her singing, you know, um, and so we'll do that. But the arrangements are this weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday, 
right there at um, Second Ebenezer on Dequinder. And if you're in Detroit, you know where Second Ebb is. We'll be right mm -hmm. there. The Detroit chapter of the Gospel Music Workshop of America, we're looking for all of you guys to be there on Friday night, starting at 630. Come dress for ministry because we're going to sing for our sister. Uh, she played with us for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Saturday morning, we'll be right there at 10 and 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And Bishop Van is the pastor there. And please lift up that family. Amen. Uh, in your prayers. We thank everybody for coming on to the show today. It's been a great day. Thank you, Crystal Peace. Thank you. Thank you, y'all being encouraged. I'm gonna leave y'all with some words from Genesis. You know, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And that's what DTE told y'all when y'all paid that shutoff notice. <laughs> the book says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few because they couldn't pass the drug test back then either. They had some job openings. <laughs> The scripture says, go in and possess the land. Now, isn't that what the squatters been doing on the east side in them houses? <laughs> yes, and finally, I'm going to give you a word from the book of Luke. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. I'm Crystal P. Y'all have a wonderful <laughs> evening. I love you love all. It. We love you. Good night, everybody. Come back. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank
you for listening to The Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. If you have enjoyed this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this with a friend or family member? We'd love for you to share it on your Facebook page. Thank you for tuning to WVTC Radio Detroit. Remember to like and share this broadcast with a friend. We are WVTC, winning victory through Christ. Opportunity is knocking at your door. It's WVTC Detroit. And if you're reliable, dependable, a fast learner, and you're ready to work in a fast-paced environment, we have something just for you. Part-time board operator, and we will train. You must have your own transportation and be flexible. Only serious inquiries, please. Send your email to WVTCDetroit, L. Whitfield at gmail.com. We are waiting to hear from you. You're listening to WVTC Gospel Radio Detroit, and we're flowing in the spirit.